Hello, and welcome back to Davis Community Television. I'm your host, Cedric Hughes, and today I'm joined by two special guests. Hi, I'm Joseph Hendricks. I'm Zoe Poppingay. And we're here to bring you another installment of Teens on Topic. Today, we'll be discussing the question, ought there be limits on freedom of speech? Now, we bring you to members of the community to see what the people of Davis have to say. So, do you think that there should be any limitations on freedom of speech? I think that's a difficult question to answer. I believe the most important part when thinking about something like this is if the speech is endangering people to where uh, you're threatening lives or like promoting violence towards people. I think that's the time where it's questionable whether or not we need to limit that speech because that's kind of like the fire, yelling fire in like a public place because that is illegal. So I think if we kept things along that line where if you're promoting violence through your speech, that should be limited. Certainly in times when the safety of the public is threatened, there should be limits on free speech. Um, but of course, it's really hard to determine when that's the case. So I have to say, from a safety point of view, that there is hate speech, which is very dangerous. And so I think in some cases that there, you know, sort of needs to be a monitoring of safety, especially when there's negative talk about certain groups? Oh, that's a good question because right now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, there's a, game, a company called Blizzard, right? And there is a card game called Hearthstone and they just had their competition. And two of the players decided to speak out about, one player decided to speak out about Hong Kong. And in that, he uh, he got demoted. He got actually left out of the play, out of out of play. And then the two guys who interviewed him got fired. So it's a hard question to answer because right now, is China, who is going to become the dominant player in the market, are they going to start because of our companies in America want to do business with them? Are we going to see our freedom of speech curtailed? That's going to be the more interesting question, I think, because. It, 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 if freedom of speech goes too far, it's been argued ever since I was a child when I saw um, Nazis in a very Jewish community uh, protesting um, on, on, June, uh, on June 6th after, you know, the end of World War, the anniversary of World War II, right? And, you know, they shouldn't have to go through that. They shouldn't have to be victimized by that. And on Twitter, owned by a separate company, not government owned, where they're being told that you know they're limiting one speech or another which is not factually correct but still the feeling is there i don't know it's a, it's going to be a very difficult question to answer because there's too many factors at play so i'm not quite sure if that's going to be i'm not sure if i'm quite answering your question because i don't think there is an easy answer to it at all i think uh freedom of speech that's insightful of violence uh, is probably needs to be monitored somehow. I, I wouldn't agree that all speech is uh, protected. Uh, yelling fire in a crowded theater would I would see as problematic. But you know, just um, just speech in general, you know, uh, railing against the government or anybody else. I I figure that's part of our constitutional right. Okay. Thank you. Well, we heard a lot of interesting opinions there, ranging from incitement of violence to hate speech to corporate speech. Zoe, what do you think? Um, I feel like I definitely agree with um, how everyone was talking about freedom of speech is all right until it incites violence. But um, I know these days we're living uh, a lot more in a time where we're considering mental well-being and mental health. And so um, when your freedom, when when your speech is also when your speech is also like mentally harming someone I don't think that's okay but of course it's where do we draw that line because that's so subjective and in it's really any case of the individual their uh, levels of sensitivity might be um, a little bit more a little bit less than other people and so that's where that's where I'm really conflicted like where you draw the line on like mental well-being because physical well-being it's really it's really easy to say this is okay and this is not okay but um, yeah, that's mostly where I stand in regards to political. Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting opinion to have. And I think that was touched on um, in those interviews with people talking about hate speech and the censorship that comes with that and maybe why that comes about. Uh, Joseph, what do you think? Yeah, I also agree with her. Um, 
But I definitely think that we shouldn't be sheltered to an extent mm. about like these you know violent issues that are happening in the world. So I think it kind of goes, it, like she said, there's not really like, you know, a certain point. But th we shouldn't be sheltered, but we also shouldn't be like, you know, constantly exposed to, you know, horrible tragedies all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. I feel like Hong Kong is an excellent example of what happens when freedom of speech is completely is revoked to mm -hmm. a to a significant extent, and I really feel like it's it's an excellent example of why freedom of speech should not be restricted to that level. But yeah, I totally agree. If we restrict freedom of speech too too much, it's also just we. We forget that the, we forget that those viewpoints exist, and then when they suddenly blow up in our faces, we're like, "Well, where did they come from? They came from they came from suppression and just um, all these bottled up feelings that are suddenly exploding." And with the internet, things can be a lot more underground now. And so I feel like with yeah, with too much of that like safety censorship, I worry that those kind of situations will come up. Not like not this time. It's not like Hong Kong. It's like everything that we stand for is being oppressed. It's just these little viewpoints that can blow up in our faces if we're not really careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, I think I'd like to bring it back to one of the points that was made um, in those interviews, and that was incitement of violence. Because I think that something that's interesting is that we consider free speech mm -hmm. to be one of our most basic rights, you know, the thing that's protected in the First Amendment of the Constitution. However, um, as pointed out, there are limits to that, yeah. right? You can't say fire in a crowded movie. Uh, you can't um, put, any, put forward any free speech that could incite violence. And I think yeah. we've seen that historically, not just in cases um, like saying a word in a movie theater, but in limiting political mm -hmm. acts as well. You know, for example, take um, the Charlottesville protests mm -hmm. um, with um, white supremacists and neo-Nazis who marched. Now, the Facebook event that put, um, that rallied these people and put forward this event was taken down because Facebook claimed that they were inciting violence. Thus, they had justification to censor these people's free speech. Now, a whole lawsuit entailed um, in which they claimed that this was wrong. However, Facebook said that they had all right because they were stopping the incitement of violence yeah. so what do you think about that yeah I agree definitely that there should be you know repercussions to these people who are saying awful things um, yeah I definitely agree with that where Facebook was in the right in that situation mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that I feel like when people say it's not physical violence they're kind of forgetting that violence doesn't just suddenly uh, begin it starts with um, it, it usually starts with Microaggression. I hope not to overuse that word, but it really starts with um, saying things and creating this like mob mentality mindset, and then that's how it gets to violence. So I understand. I completely understand why Facebook would not allow that. Also, they are they are a private they are a private social media platform. If I yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so earlier you said something about um, hate speech, and I think that was really interesting, and that's something definitely to touch on. Um, so on college campuses, for example, um, we see a lot of limits to that. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of places on college campuses, you can't put forward hate speech, and yeah. there's a lot of designated safe spaces where any action like that would be um, totally prohibited. So what do you guys think about those safe spaces on campuses? Have those gone too far in limiting free speech, or are they just in protecting um, people who are at the campus and protecting educational values? No, I think they're at the full right to have those places. And and when I when I say that um, we can't censor for our safety too much, I definitely am not referring to that. Just a disclaimer. It's I totally believe that people have every right to deserve a safe space to to like to stay away from people that might infringe on their very existence or their very rights. My only concern is that the opposing side might argue that because these safe spaces exist, they have the right to exist to excite to incite these um, hate speech groups. That's my that's yeah. my only thing yeah. about it. Yeah, I agree too. I definitely think that there's a difference between free speech and hate speech, and you know, hate speech is a very dangerous thing, and it damages a lot of you know different communities. So yeah. I agree, yeah. So, so you say that hate speech is a very dangerous thing. What do you mean by that? Well, it's just very damaging. It causes a lot of uh, issues with mental health to, you know, specifically like minorities who, you know, f face, f like deal with a lot of hate speech in their life. Like they're definitely, like there's mental health repercussions that come along with it. And also just like, just fear and paranoia 
just in general. Yeah. yeah, no, Joseph, I think I think you're absolutely right on that. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen study after study showing that students at college campuses who face continual hate speech, they actually do see impacts in their learning. Yeah. You know, so for those students, these safe spaces are crucial for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that one interesting question that's been put forward concerning that is what happens after college? So, you know, after college they leave and they don't have these safe spaces. So do you think that there's any impact on these kids? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. Cause it's different because, um, like I said before, we shouldn't be sheltered, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just different because, um, you know, you're an adult and you have a limit to these things. Well, if you're like a teenager, you know, you may be more sensitive, but just then again, hate speech is all around mm -hmm. bad and shouldn't really, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's- No, no, I, I totally see your point in that, you know, we want to prepare, you know, students to go out into the world, mm -hmm. you know, prepared to face the things that they will face, you know, possibly hate speech. But I, I mean, you know, at the same time, we want to protect you know, in these institutions yeah. of learning their ability to do so and mm -hmm. their ability to learn, you know, it's something that hate speech often gets in the way, in, mm -hmm. way of, yeah. I feel like what's, um, where some of these safe spaces could go wrong is that um, when, when they go, when you go to safe space, they might exist to pretend that the problem doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. then, so then that's where the sheltering and all those issues take place where when they go out into the real world, they're not, they're not coddled like that anymore. And so then they remember the significance of this issue. I think safe spaces do a really good job when they acknowledge that these issues exist and they work to form a community to stand against them. Yeah. I feel like there's nothing wrong with being in a community of solidarity even. Um, and I definitely don't think that being in a community is being ignorant of any opposing beliefs. I just think that when safe spaces are like, oh, these, these issues don't happen and it's possible to completely avoid them. It's unfortunately it's not possible to completely avoid them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think when safe spaces teach um, ways to cope with them and connect with a community that can stand with you, I think that's where they are um, doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think um, just to bring it back to the uh, the interviews that we saw earlier, um, one of the uh, interviewees touched on corporate speech. Mm -hmm. And so do you guys think that corporations should, just like people, have the same limitations placed on their speech and the same freedoms placed on their speech? Um, yeah, and, and yeah, I definitely think so. Like Facebook, again, like they had, they had the thing where they had to um, sort of censor someone because they're inciting violence. Um, so yeah, I do definitely think that corporations should be held to the same, you know, repercussions and consequences as humans. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess on the perspective of what they're allowed to say, if every if every organization is allowed to say what they want to say, usually, I guess based um, statistically, there will be around the same amount of corporations that might believe in one side and another side. So it's not like there will necessarily be a massive imbalance on. Um, any political or social spectrum so that I feel like um, with those freedoms there will still be places for people to go to if that's what their main concern is. That's the main concern that I hear that um, if every corporation is biased then that just makes things too complicated or something. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I think um, just in the last few minutes that we have today um, let's go a little um, away from what we've been discussing and let's talk about um, whistleblowers and corporations. So mm -hmm. in 1989 the government passed the Whistleblow Whistleblower Protection Act and this made it so that people would be able to come forward within the federal government um, and expose wrongdoings that were going on. And this was protected as um, you know, their type of free speech and something that mm -hmm. they you know, were able to do and were able to come forth with and say. So what do you think about that? And what are the implications of that moving forward? Whistleblowers in the corporate workspace or in the, uh, the public workspace, in the government, um, you know, their ability to come forward and talk about the issues that they see and the wrongdoings in government. I feel like um, it is their free will to do so, but then under that they do consent to having a lot of issues with, um, I guess, um, employment and yeah. jobs and all that general stuff. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could say more on the subject, but I'm not quite sure about 
the um, the inner workings of whistleblowers. Yeah. 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 No. And I mean, I think that that that's something that you know we still see you know unfolding today. It's a question that is unanswered. You know, on one mm. hand, we want to be able to expose the wrongdoings and do something about them. Yeah. But you know, on the other hand, there's issues of national security. You know, what can we do to keep those secrets safe that um you know could have impacts on American lives? Mm. And I, I think that there's a lot of questions like that that are still out there concerning free speech. There's you know this whole topic. It doesn't have an easy you know yes or no answer because you know in everything from inciting violence to hate speech to you know corporate whistleblowers we see that there isn't a yes or no and that there are yeah. vo there's validity in both sides so you know I think that that's something that you know it's up to us to continue having those discussions mm -hmm. and you know to find our path through that so yeah um, but uh, so that's all the time we have for today uh, I've been your host Cedric Hughes and this has been teens on topic mm -hmm.